This video is about aerial photographs of the Beehive Bridge area, taken in 1934. So, from the Mission History Notes website, click on Photos. And under Aerial, click on Mitchum. And scroll down to Common Side East. There are links to seven aerial photographs on the Historic England website. EPW 044860 through 64 all concentrate on the Beehive Bridge area. Let's have a look and see which one's the best one to review. We can see on the right hand side of this road, which is Common Side East, which in common Strictly speaking, this part is Three Kings Peace, so named because it was a piece that was cut off from the rest of the common when this railway line was built. I think it opened in 1868. Down the bottom, you can see part of Three Kings Pond. Let's have a look at a different view. Number 61. Same area. Port Side East, the railway line. There's a bit further back, not as far as the level crossing. So we'll look at 62. More of the common than the roads. So we'll look at 63. Common side east here. Shrieking space here, which from common there. And railway line. Then look at 64. Okay, let's have a look at some of the details here. So, we have Common Side East, the, rail the railway line which now goes towards Streatham, and there's a station now, Eastfields Crossing, which is Eastfields Station, and this way towards Mitcham Junction. This house is no longer there. Let's have a look at the survey map. This map was surveyed in 1953. And the house we can see in the aerial photograph was called The Cross. Eric Montague's Mitcham History is number three, Pollis Hill and Common Side East of Lonesome. Sells us on pages. 51 and 52. The Croft, a double fronted mid 19th century house with typical Gothic detailing. It was demolished in 1973. A century before, when it was known as Wycombe Cottage, that's spelled W Y K E H A M, Wycombe Cottage, the house was the home of Sir Frederick Gale and his family. They were probably the first occupants, and they first appear in local directories in 1870. This was a period of great change in the parish of Mitchell. But early in 1877, Frederick Gale, then honorary secretary of the newly formed Commons Preservation Committee, was prominent in the fight to stop the London, Brighton and South Coast Railway Company of acquiring powers to enable it to construct yet another railway line across Mitchell Common. In 1868, the Streatham to Sutton line had been opened. And nine years later, the company perceived a need to straighten parts of the line so that speeds could be maintained by fast coastal trains passing through Mitchell Junction. The new length of the track was planned to cut across the common directly opposite Gale's house. 
Although the company's proposals had many supporters locally as well as nationally, protesters' efforts were successful, and the new line was never constructed. Due largely to Gower's efforts, the outlook from his house remained unspoiled until the building of the new Beehive Bridge half a century later. Yes, the Beehive Bridge had to be rebuilt to accommodate the 118 bus route. And I have on my website, Mission Mystery Notes, a web page that details this it's about the Beehive Bridge. And in fact, I've got a clip here from the Mitchell News of Mercury from 25th of August 1939, which is captioned, This scene of confusion represents the early stages in the erection of a new 42-foot wide Beehive Bridge over the railway at Commonside East Mitchell. The new bridge will replace the old Humped Back Bridge, and in order to widen it, negotiations have been completed for the use of a strip of common land. An equal area will be given in exchange elsewhere. The exchange of land idea comes about because of the 1891 Act to preserve Mitchell Common that basically stipulates that if there is the need of a road widening, for example, in this case, a bridge widening, then part of the common can be given up, but something else has to be given back to make the total the same. Our website goes on to describe that the bridge had to be rebuilt and it was not strong enough to take bus traffic over it, the Route 118. And I have a copy here from the council minutes. The surveyor reported that he had received a communication from the chief engineer to the Southern Railway Company stating that the BI bridge is not of a type which could be strengthened and that before it was able to take unrestricted traffic, it would require reconstruction. The surveyor suggested that having received this letter, he would be in a position to ask the Ministry of Transport to assist the council to obtain particulars of the construction of this bridge. We were here to find the out whether the weight limits imposed on the bridge by the railway company could safely be increased so as to so as to carry bus traffic. Resolved that the surveyor be instructed to communicate with the Ministry of Transport upon the line suggested by him. And uh, this was from this was in 1939, January 5th, 1939, Riley Schofield, the borough engineer. This is the Mitcham Borough, by the way, not Merton Borough, because Merton Borough, Merton Borough Merton didn't come back until 1965. So you knew that. I thought I'd just remind you. Lehigh Bridge and Mitcham Junction Bridge that the tenders of Mrs. Howard Farrow and Company be accepted for the construction, the reconstruction of Lehigh Bridge and the tender of Mr. A.E. Farrow for construction of reconstruction of the Mitcham Junction Bridge. Oh, that's what it And a photograph showing the engineer's line reference. BTH1. Structure reference 1217. Showing that it's 9 miles and 43 chains from London Bridge. Anyway, going back to the aerial photograph. So that was the Croft. That's Spencer Road. So this is Grove Road, here's the BIO Bridge. So this photo there from 1934 shows us it's before it was rebuilt in 1939. Doesn't look like a humpback bridge, but I suppose it is. I suppose you can work this out from this incline, decline. This property area here. At this time, perhaps, was a sparrow hawk. Yard back there, and so on. the house has been demolished, and uh, a block of flats is currently being built there. And that looks like the Beehive Pub. The building is physically still there. The converting flats. This terrace of houses was called Smith's Terrace. I have an entry about the Smiths building oh, sorry, the Smiths buildings. Try not to confuse it. There, there is also a Smiths Terrace. E, there was a Smiths Terrace at London Road on the corner of Bond Road. This was the Smiths buildings. A terrace of 30 houses between Lovett Walk and the Beehive Pub. They were numbered sequentially 1 to 15 on the left side and 16 to 30 on the east side. Demolished in 1936. 
Okay, so as we say, this is a 1934 photograph, so that's a couple of years before they were demolished. And they were demolished because there was a 1934 health report which stated it as being a clearance area. In other words, they thought it was slums and they needed to knock it down. That comes from a report the medical officer held for Mitchell from the Welcome Trust. There's a PDF for that. There's a, a map. Uh, from 1913. And this piece here is a clip from a Merton Memories photo. Back to the photograph. I'm going towards Mission on the common side east. Uh, there's that school. Uh, can't remember that bit, sorry. Uh, or was that where the Mitchell Grammar School was for a period of time? So this then is Baker Main, isn't it? There's, there's some Mark Trone up there. This is Baker Lane. Let's go back to that map. Uh, Mitchum County Grammar School for Boys, my apologies. Yes, so Baker Lane, Barnard Road, Gaston Road. This is a 1953 map and this is a 1934 aerial photograph. So Baker Lane, Gaston Road. This is undeveloped. Hillary Avenue, which still has a footpath leading to the back of what was the Three Kings pub. So um, on the few occasions I went to the Three Kings pub when it was a pub, I'd walk down Baker Lane, down Hillary Avenue, down this footpath to the Three Kings. This is now an office block and there are flats behind, but that footpath still exists. Whether it's actually an official footpath, I don't know. Thanks right, so the phone of Grow. This all looks kind of new, doesn't it? In fact, the, the road looks brand spanking new. That's either a footbridge or a... That is a footbridge, isn't it? It's, it's, still, it's still a footbridge for... It's still a footbridge today. Oh, here we go. It's just off a map here, a footbridge. So you can Guston Road, Lemus Avenue. Here's the footbridge over the railway line. Yep, that's a footbridge. Now these buildings here is the Mitchum was the Mitchum model mo not the the Mitchum model laundry. The Mitchum model laundry. 52 Grow Road, Laundry and Shop at 38 Mullet Road, as shown in this ad. This was an ad from 1952, possibly from one of the cricket yearbooks. Love Laundry, the service. Grow Road, Mitchum, Mullet Parade. And this 1934 ad, that's convenient. This is actually a picture. Of the building, it looks like one, two, three, four, five, six roofs. Can we discern that from the under? Not clearly. I actually, could look at a different one, a different view. See if we can come back to that. So, coming back to the map, Mitchell Model Laundry, Kings Road, Spencer Road. Beyond this footbridge, what is now over here, a Burnham Court housing, bombs of ice, built in the 50s, after the Second World War. I think there was a tip there, Guyatt's tip. Let's have a look at um, a different angle then. What was a good one? Let's go about 60. 
Ah, here we go. We can now look at it. Mitch and Mother Audrey. And come out. Here it is. One, two, three, four, five, six. Yes, as in the as in the head. Open air drying grounds close to lavender fields. Uh -huh. Here you go. Do you believe that's the origin of the word laundry? It's association with drying clothes on lavender. Well, don't take my word for it. You might have looked that up. So there's that croft again. There's a wall all the way around it. And there's parts of that wall still exist because there's a letterbox. There's a wall mounted letterbox. Which I think is the only one in Mitchell. Going back to Smith's buildings. The footpath. The solid of it here, this footpath here. So leading from the corner of Gaston Road down to Conside East. The footpath still exists, the school is still there, and I think there's a playing field there now. But as can be seen in this photograph, there were also other houses there. So let's have a look at my website again. Lavender Walk. Not Lambeth Walk, the Lavender Walk. Uh, I've come inside east to know if a path at least in the corner of Baker Lane and Gaston Road, yes. There's a 1934 photograph from the London Picture Archive, which shows the foot path, and there was a sweet shop next to it. I oh, remember that when I used to go to the Cumberland and come down this footpath and go across into the Three Heats Piece. And the houses were arranged. These old houses I'm referring to here. Those ones there. Different, they were named different pieces. So, from Common Side East to East Fields. So, a 1925 street directory describes the road as if you're entering it from a particular direction, which is very handy. So now we can use the aerial photograph and we can say, aha, so we're coming in from Comside East. We're going down to Lavender Walk. And that building there on its own was called Mint Cottages. So it's 17 inch house, numbers one and two. We go back to the photograph again. Then we have a terrace, which looks like two, four, six, six houses. It looks like six houses. Coxes, cottages. Five are numbered, so perhaps that number six was empty. And then we go back to the photo, and finally this larger building down the end. Helena Cottages. There you go. Some news articles there. I'll put a link to this and all the other posts referred to. Oh, the World War One connection is um Captain William Allison White, who's got the VC, Victoria Cross. I know they're going to Merton address. Five and Lavender Walk. Is that true? In 1914 to 18 war. Can't see why it was so. Uh, they're numbered Lavender Walk. And see here at each. Each terrace of houses, each block of houses, are separately numbered. So I'm not sure how Merton Memories concluded that they were at number five, Lavender Walk in the First World War, if in the 1925 Street Directory, Lavender Walk houses were not renumbered. There yeah, that's confusing, isn't it? Anyway, back to the photo. That's the sort of interesting buildings on the north side of the Compside East. So I remember where the compass point is. Common has a certain amount of interest in as much that, as I said, the footpath from Gaston Road, Baker Lane, 
Lemon the Walk, which we've just been talking about, was directly opposite what path across the common. That's been rerouted now. Let's have a look at Apple Maps. So this is a 3D bird's eye view of Apple Maps. And as I said, Lavender Walk led to a footpath across Three Kings Peace, and you can actually see the outline of where that path used to go. So that's been landscaped there, and the footpath was changed to the corner here, on a bend of Comsai East, and pedestrian crossing put there. And strangely, the map plays with the idea that the best footpath is called Cold Blows, whereas I think Cold Blows is just that footpath that everyone calls at least to the Cricket Green. Cold Blows formed part of a ancient bridal path leading from the East Fields to the West Fields. Or well, specifically in this case, across the common and then towards the Cricket Green, which was a part of the common at one point towards the west. Really. Um, so yes, as I said, the school is still there and there is now a playing area for the school on the other side of Lavender Walk. And uh, this is an interesting view. And as much as it does actually show building work underway on the Sprout Hawk site on the corner of Gumside East End. How well close. And what was the Mitchell Model laundry? There's a block of flats called Maytree Court. Good day, I'm Luke now. Thank you for watching. If you like this video, there's a like button somewhere that you could press and say that you like it uh, by pressing the like button. And if you'd like to subscribe to my channel, I'll be doing some more of these type of reviews because well, I thought it fascinating. I hope you do too. Bye.